Okay, now that we've learned the fundamentals of Excel pivot tables, it's time to learn the best practices of working with them. Remember, our source data is the data that our pivot tables are using to generate their summaries. Let's go over a few best practices. First, you need to make sure that every column has a column header. Without column headers, Excel will not be able to pivot your data. Second, you need to make sure that there are no empty rows or columns in your data set. If there are, simply remove them because they're going to mess up your calculations and they aren't really going to do anything for you anyways. Third, it's best to keep your source data formatting simple. Do not include any extra formatting or totals or subtotals inside of your data. Formatting never trances over and totals or subtotals are going to throw off your measurements. Fourth, it's best to keep your source data in a dedicated tab. It ensures that your data stays separate from your analysis, where you might be doing a lot of manipulation and you might accidentally make a change to your raw data that you do not want to do. It also decreases clutter, which is especially important when you're sharing data out among stakeholders. Typically, stakeholders do not need to see the raw data set when drawing conclusions from your analysis. I haven't done this one up to this point in this course because it's actually really hard to instruct the basics of Excel across multiple tabs. However, now that we're becoming more advanced in our Excel skills, I'm going to start doing it more. In the instructional sections where I use a raw data tab, you will see a tab that says in parentheses raw and then the name of the data set. That tab will always be highlighted in black, so you know that it is raw data, and you know that the work we are going to be doing will not be inside of that raw data tab. Fifth, and finally, make sure that your data follows a rectangular format. This means that you want your variables to be your columns and your rows to be your observations. In the case of the data at the bottom of this slide, the variables are things like artist, genre, millions of records sold, and your observations are the individual artists or musicians and the corresponding data that goes along with them. Typically, with larger data sets, we have far more observations than we have variables. Since we typically read and understand information in a top to bottom format on computers, it makes the most sense for our data set to extend downwards instead of rightwards. Okay. Now that we've learned our pivot table data source best practices, let's apply these learnings and continue through the next section.